Congratulations to the Bulgarian Academy of Sciences and to the current president, Professor Julian Rathalski. Congratulations to the board, to the members, and especially to the Bulgarian society in which it has prospered over these years. Congratulations to the citizens of Bulgaria that will benefit from its efforts in research. 1869 was a great year. The Academy was founded in exile in Brayla, in the Kingdom of Romania. Meanwhile, in our own little island, the Anglo-Irish author Maria Edgeworth, who had popularised the novel, had died, but her impact lived on. Hamilton had made Edgeworth an honorary member of the Royal Irish Academy. To place the time in perspective, we must remember the metre had not yet been agreed internationally. In practical terms, it was used as a tradesman's measure. For all scientific purposes, it was much more difficult. Every time you use the physical artefact, it deteriorated. In this little western island, the natural philosophers of the day prospered. They seemed to manage the environment in which they grew up, largely dominated by religion, yet they did not emigrate. By contrast, the literary scholars seemed to find the environment stifling, and in order to express themselves freely, moved extensively throughout Europe and the world. Often the Grand Tour was an essential component of their formation. It is ironic that in this repressive environment, Schrodinger found a home in Ireland in the 40s. And uh, his, this was after his domestic arrangements could not be easily accommodated in the Oxford of the day. Even in my time, the writings of Edna O'Brien caused a scandal and she emigrated before gaining wide international applause. A recent book demonstrated and claimed that Shaw was one of the first users of social media and his characteristic appearance to spread his message far and wide. As well as a distinguished past, it's no doubt that the Academy will have a very impressive future. It is my first message that freedom of movement, freedom of expression and attracting the best researchers will be part of that future. Knowing these trends, career tracking and effective use of data will be very important to attracting resources. As one of the European Union's most Eastern members, the Academy will have a particular role to play. And I note with interest that the budget of Horizon Europe has particular funds for the widening agenda. Perhaps not quite so much as we expected, but still going from 1% to 3.3% of the total budget. Indeed, Bulgaria and the Academy can do better yet in specialist areas like space, and the Digital Environment, Digital Europe programme, where there are specialist budgets of significant size. In terms of deep learning, artificial intelligence and social media, I cannot dwell on the past without prognosticating on the future. Shaw could not have foreseen what is happening now. Artificial intelligence is affecting how we think, here and now. Some work being done in this area is by Reimagine Europa that ran a significant event in Berlin in January of this year. And they called our attention to the fact that certain American interests, supported with uh, some individual Catholics, are, have a large-scale training program for what might be referred to as alt facts. The scale of this enterprise is shocking. In terms of benefits, I think that scientific publishing and peer review will be one of the first to benefit from artificial intelligence and deep learning. At the moment it is a craft enterprise depending very much on skilled intermediaries that find the really good matching peer with a particular scientific proposal or a particular piece of publishing. I've got no doubt that we will see benefits from this area in the very near future. In closing, I cannot but observe on the huge geopolitical shifts that we're currently experiencing. Last week saw the forum of the Belt and Road Initiative. It is really notable that the diagram showing the European countries that have signed up to this form an eastern ring around Europe. There is no doubt in my mind that Bulgaria will have an active role to play in this domain with scientific diplomacy. And in this regard, I particularly welcome 
the uh, initiative from, from Waitash, the Commissioner, in that he reasserts the commitment from Europe to this activity of scientific diplomacy. Attracting and retaining the best researchers will be a key part of the future, and I have no doubt that we can work effectively with you in this regard. You have a wonderful environment. You have a fantastic advantage in terms of geopolitical mix. For our part, we at the European Science Foundation pledge our support for the next 150 years, working with our members, Professor Eva Pasheva of this academy, Professor Georgi Veselov of the Bulgarian Science Fund. I have no doubt that we can work with you to make the next 150 as successful.